Hi guys, so I recently released an image of the double cluster with a bunch of HA in the background. And I noticed that many of you guys commented that you would give it a try and see if you can also bring up so much HA. So this was not the first time that you know the double cluster was shown with so much HA behind it. But because I spent so much time on the HA, uh, about 20 hours uh, in this image, it popped out so much. I think it's very impressive. So in case you also want to try the double cluster in RGBHA, uh, let me show you how I combine the HA background with the RGB stars on PixInsight. It's uh, very simple, very basic, yet it might uh, you might wonder how to do it. So uh, let's get to PixInsight and show you guys how to combine them. Okay, so we are here on the beautiful PixInsight. So here we have four files. I have RGB and HA. So I took, I think, an hour on each, I think 50 minutes on each, RG and B. And I took 20 hours approximately on H. So um, let's see the RGB channels first. As you can see, it's just, you know, just stars. There's nothing around, no nebulosity or anything. You cannot see uh, any background. It's just stars and some reflections here. Uh, and then the HA, if we stretch it, now we can see not only stars, but also some of the HA gas in the background, which is a good sign. So how do we combine these into one image and how do we bring out the HA so much? So the key is to use the HA as a background. So before we do this, I'm going to put the HA away and I'm going to quickly combine the RGB channels using LRGB combination. So we'll select these here, R, G, and B. If you want, you can play with the settings, but I'm going to just go very quick because I already processed the image anyway. So I just want to show you guys how to do it um, in an easy fashion. So I'm just going to go and kind of rush through it uh, without caring too much about the uh, tiny settings. So here we have the combined RGB. I'm going to stretch it. Let me unlink the channels first, okay. And now we can close the RG and B files. And so the next thing you wanna do here before we proceed is to turn this into a nonlinear image. So for this, I'm just going to quickly open up histogram transformation. I'm going to just drag STF in there, very simple. Then you can reset the STF and apply the uh, histogram transformation and we're gonna have a non-linear image perfect all right then i'm going to rename this as rgb and i'm going to put it away for now on the side so it's safe and so we uh, we only have one file left which is the ha file so what you want to do next is you want to stretch this image as well just so you have a non-linear version and once you have stretched the image, you want to remove the stars because remember, we don't need the stars. These stars are all red anyway, they're all HA stars. So we want to remove all the stars and only keep the background, including the gas. So I don't want to make you wait too much. So I just applied a star exterminator on my HA image here. And now we have a resulting starless image as well as a stars image. So we don't actually need the image with stars. So I'm just going to trash this and only keep the starless image. Okay, and so we have a few different issues here. The first one is my crazy tilt. Uh, I have some tilt stars here that are not removed, and I have some vignetting, I mean, some uh, artifact of reflections here. So I will probably remove that uh, in clone stamp, but because we don't really care too much for now about these things, I just wanna show you how to combine this and how to make it work with some RGB files. What you want to do next is to transform this into a color image because right now it's a gray image and you can't really add color into a gray image that easily. So we're going to go into image, color spaces and convert to RGB color. So now the, you know, the software PixInsight um, will take this as a color image. So I'm quickly going to remove these annoying stars on the on the corners here because they're bothering me a lot. So the next thing I want to do is to kind of differentiate between the background and the HA gases here. So let's open up Curve Transformation 
and we can try to bring out the gases more and uh, only keep i mean only make the ha pop out so here i'm just trying to darken up the background and make it a bit darker and then i'm going to bring out those gases okay so now the structures are more visible than before all right next we want to make this image you know, kind of red because HA is red, right? So to do this, it's simple. We go to, uh, well, we'll open up curves again, but the first thing we want to do is to make a mask because if we don't make a mask, then everything is going to turn red. Uh, let me show you real quick. See, if we just do this, it's all going to be red and it's just very unnatural. So let's open up a, a mask creating process. Uh, I like to use ACDNR. I think that it makes a, you know, some of the best masks out there. So if you go to lightness mask, check on preview and open up the preview window, you can play with those sliders to try to make the perfect mask. So here, uh, I'm trying to make the separation obvious between the background and the gases. And then if you uncheck preview, you can close this preview window, make a duplicate of the image, and then apply uh, the preview to uh, the image. So I should definitely have taken care of this artifact here. I did it very early when I was processing the image, but here in this case, I don't want to waste your time doing it, so just don't look at it. Um, so now we have a mask, and we're going to move this mask and apply it to the starless image. And as you can see here, the red is going to be protected, so we want to invert it. So I'm going to invert the mask. And uh, now I'm going to hide it. And if we open up curves again now, let's try to do the preview. And if we make the red higher, as you can see, it's a bit more natural. And you can play with inverting the mask, um, but normally you should only you should make sure that the the mask is protecting the background. So don't only play with the red curve here, uh, or else it will look very strange. Try to play with the GB, so green and blue. Uh, usually when I make one curve go higher, I like to bring down the two other ones if I'm trying to bring up a specific color, just so the brightness matches. So here, uh, you can also play with the B and C channels and try to make it so that it's as natural as possible. So here with a C channel, you usually like to bring it up like this. I'm going to use the red curve again. And you can apply it a few times. So I'm going to apply it now. Then I'm going to reset it. And starting from scratch, I'm going to play again with the curves. So the more green you bring down, the more pink your image is going to look. And if we uh, bring down the blue, uh, you'll have more orange. So try to get something that's red. And uh, the C component uh, makes it more vibrant. That might be a bit too much, but let's try anyway. But see how much HS there is? It's crazy. Look at that. Look at those structures. I love that. Okay, now let's add the the stars to this. Actually, I think it's a bit too fade. Let's open up RGBK. And I'm going to invert the mask, actually. And if we invert the mask, we can make our, uh, our background much darker. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to apply this. So take your time, of course, with this. I'm not taking my time here, but take your time. And so now, let's pretend this is what we want for the background. We just have to add the uh, RGB start on it. So the first thing I want to do is open up the RGB master here that's already stretched. And I'm going to go to uh, a star elimination process. So either starnet 2 or star exterminator and simply apply the process to the image while making sure it's going to generate a star image because we're going to ditch the starless image and only keep the stars. 
Okay, we now have the stars for the RGB channel and we have the starless image we can delete. As you can see, not much going on here. There is no HE at all, so we don't see any gas. So I'm just going to delete this monstrosity. I have some crazy tilt here, that's why there is so many artifacts and all that. I'm going to remove this mask, just so it's out of the way. And we now officially have two files. So starless HE and RGB stars. I'm going to rename this stars and the only thing we have to do left uh, is to combine these two. So obviously before you do that you want to work on this file as much as possible. Uh, so for example you can bring out the details, you can uh, take care of the noise, you can try to bring out some textures here and there using a bunch of different processes. You can once again play with the saturation even more and uh, you know, like you're processing a real image, right? So once you're very, very happy with how this looks, um, you can then combine it at the very end. All right, so let's combine these two. I'm going to be using pixel math, which is very simple. We're going to check, use a single RGBK expression. And here uh, I'm going to use the formula written in here to screen the stars back into the image. So here it says on the bottom there, starless times stars with a bunch of weird thingies. So I'll just recreate that, starless times stars. And I think this matches. And then we can drag this onto one of the two images. And here we go. We now have the combined uh, RGB HA file with the beautiful background. So one thing you can do as well is you can reduce the size of the stars by using either builds tools or uh, morphological transformation or anything you want. But yeah, this is pretty much uh, how you combine the HA background with the RGB stars. And that is exactly how I did for this image. And you can see the result is very impressive. Uh, you can still tweak here and there with the curve transformation if you wish but this image is already very impressive as it is and I'm very happy with the results. So yeah, you can, uh, as you can see, you can tweak and make the background a bit darker, completely up to you. And uh, yeah, I hope this was useful for you guys and that you like the image. Yeah, I really love this, you know, those clusters with a beautiful background, it's just magnificent. So I'll see you guys next time and class guys.